So in this video, we want to get you ready for doing a lab in class, um, testing how enzyme speed changes as a result of various environmental conditions that we change. Um, potentially, we're going to at least look at data that, that looks at how temperature and how pH differences might either speed up an enzyme or slow it down or maybe even stop it altogether. And then we also want to make sure that you guys see evidence that, that an enzyme reaction is actually happening. So um, let's talk about the theory first. I did this in the enzyme video, but remember that um, an enzyme is shaped to fit a particular chemical that we call that, uh, that chemical, the enzyme's substrate. And when they're mixed together, um, they have the potential at the molecular level to collide with one another. And when a substrate collides in the enzyme's active site, the enzyme will speed up the chemical reaction of the substrate and help it turn into products that then leave the active site of the enzyme and maybe the enzyme can repeat if it collides with another substrate. So in this lab we're going to work with an enzyme called peroxidase. Enzymes usually end in ace as a suffix, um, although not always. Um, turns out we're getting our enzyme from um, taking turnips and um, putting them in a blender to open up their cells and release all their proteins. There are a lot of proteins in a turnip cell, but only peroxidase will do something here because we're only going to add it to a test tube that has hydrogen peroxide chemical in it. The same hydrogen peroxide that is in uh, supermarkets. Um, and peroxidase only has a shape to fit the hydrogen peroxide substrate. And so when they collide together, the hydrogen peroxide is going to have a chemical reaction sped up to where it turns into water and oxygen gas. So that's kind of the chemical equation there. Um, now, in order to see that this is actually occurring, um, water is colorless and oxygen is a gas, but it's actually gonna be um, too small for us to see. We're not really gonna see bubbles form necessarily. So we're gonna put a third chemical in our test tubes called guaiacol. Um, you definitely don't need to memorize the name of that chemical, but for our purposes, guaiacol itself is clear in color until it binds with oxygen, the same oxygen that's going to be produced when the enzyme is working. And so when, when guaiacol and oxygen come together, they make something called tetraguaiacol, which for our purposes is brown in color. So we're going to be able to see a color change when the enzyme reaction is working. And we can see the speed of that change by thinking about how quickly it becomes brown. So we have a very simple way for you guys to kind of um, estimate how brown the test tube is at any given uh, moment in time. We're just going to give you a little color chart that looks like this. You're going to put your test tube in front of it and just kind of as best as possible guess on a scale of 1 to 10 how brown the test tube is going uh, is at that particular time point. So maybe just to give you some quick sample data, uh, maybe when you guys kind of mix the test tubes um, just without changing anything, we call that a control group. Maybe you get data that looks something like this. Maybe after about five minutes of time on a scale of one to 10, it looks like it's about a six in, in terms of how brown it is. Uh, maybe it makes sense that something like environment A would speed up the enzyme reaction because it looks like it's turning more brown over the same five minutes. It's higher on the scale of 1 to 10. Maybe it makes sense that environment B would be something that would slow down the enzyme's activity because it's lower on the scale of 1 to 10 after five minutes. And then I hope um, we're going to see some things like environment C as well. Um, it doesn't seem to change color at all. It stays at one. And so that would be a really good example of something that stops the enzyme from doing what it wants to do. All right, so we got a quick little film here teaching you how to do the lab. Um, uh, also read your lab procedures. First things first, lab goggles, please. Always on while you're working with the chemicals. You can take them off after cleanup. All of your chemicals are labeled. Here's the peroxidase enzyme. You'll see that we have syringes labeled for every liquid too. So make sure you use the right syringe with the right chemical. You have your guaiacol, the chemical that turns colors. And then you have your hydrogen peroxide uh, tube full of uh, hydrogen peroxide substrate as well. So the first thing you can do to really make sure you do well in this lab is to label a piece of paper around your test tube rack because you'll want to add enzyme and water to one set of test tubes and the substrate and guaiacol and water to the other test tubes so that you don't mix them until you're ready to start your timer. So when you label it like this, you'll make sure you add the right things to the right test tubes. Very simple, right? 
Here is a quick example of um, how to read a syringe. You'll see that you take a reading in the kind of the, the part that touches the wall of the tube closest to the liquid. So this would be like six mil of water, for example. So once you add all of your things to their correct test tubes, you're ready to mix them. As soon as you mix them, have somebody start their timer. Maybe you just mix it twice like this to make sure they're mixed. And then you're ready to take your zero minute reading. Just use the color chart and see what color matches up. Probably really early on, it's just a one. And then you'll time it every minute and you'll take the color reading again. So you can always team up like this. Miss Malden is adding the correct chemicals to the next set of test tubes while I am taking a reading every minute. So you can kind of uh, split the work here. And then we want to show you, you guys are going to have a chance to use different pH environments to see how that affects the enzyme. We only have one um, syringe though that can load the pH. So we're going to use the water syringe as it turns out. Um, and you always want to add the six mil of pH solution to the enzyme tube because we want to see how pH affects the enzyme. So, but in between using different pHs, you need to flush out that syringe with water so that we don't contaminate the different pH solutions. So you see she's drawing up some water and just flushing it into a waste cup. So we hope you enjoy this lab, guys, and you can see kind of the quick results we got from our two experiments.